Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, as always, is Phil Gordimer, uh, our cameraman, director, producer, IT guy. Oh yeah, and he's my husband too. There yeah. he is. <laughs> so today, we're going to be talking about kitchen nightmares. You have them, even I have them. So let's share some stories about them. But first, we got to start off with a cocktail. If you haven't seen Friday's episode, we'll put a link somewhere so that you can go back later and watch it. But I'm going to make that uh, cocktail from that today. It's called the Breakfast Martini. So I'm going to be reading this off my phone. So glasses. This starts out with gin. I know some of you don't like gin, but this may change your mind. What is going on with my laptop? So I'm using my favorite gin today. I need, I'm making two cocktails, so I need four ounces of gin. And yes, as you know, on our regular episodes and in the recipes, all the metrics are there. So please forgive me if I miss them today. Right in our glass. Next is Contru. Now, Contru, you know, is an orange liqueur. I prefer it over triple sec in most things, especially something like this. This is a little fancier than like a Cosmo. So I'm going to need one full ounce. There we go. All right, but is that a real ounce or is that a Pete and Phil ounce? Well, that's probably a Pete and Phil ounce. Now I need lemon juice. About half an ounce, which is about half a lemon. Ooh, there we go. And I assume everyone can hear us. If not, let us know in the chat. Now, here is the fun part. I need some marmalade. A couple of tablespoons. Oops. Since it's two drinks. Or one drink for me. Yeah, one drink for you. All right, now I'm going to stir this up in this glass here before I shake it. And the reason is we want to break the, this marmalade and get its flavors all through the drink. Because when we put it with the ice and shake it, if we don't break that up now, it'll go to the bottom and just stick to the ice. Hi, Dixie. Hi, Dixie. And fill. All right. Let's pour this in here. And now we do our shaky shaky. Lovely. All right. Now, as always, I need some chilled martini glasses. Let me grab them out of the freezer. Thanks, Melissa. And I need one more thing I'm going to grab from the fridge. I want to put a little dollop of marmalade in the bottom of each glass, kind of like a garnish, like a cherry. Like that. And there's a good dollop. And now we strain. Look at that color. That's pretty. All right, there's two glasses and there's two of us. Therefore, it means I'm coming over to drink. Yes, please. Can we do it without shaking the cameras and knocking them over? And disturbing our Salem cat who's judging us. Here you go, mon petit. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Lovely. Time to get this party on the road. These are bright, sparkly. You get the lemon, you get the orange marmalade. It really wakes you up. All right. Since we both got a drink in hand... And the topic for today is supposed to be kitchen nightmares. 
Let's take a look at a few of them. They're already sent in ahead of time. But before that, I want you to talk about your mom and Thanksgiving, because that seems to be a, a sore spot. <laughs> so there are two very memorable Thanksgivings that were kitchen nightmares for my mother, really. Uh, one year, and I was very little, my grandparents came down from New York, so we had this big family event, and we were just sitting down to dinner around our big kitchen table. Now, this was an old farmhouse table that had been passed down through the generations, and my mother just loved it. So we're just sitting down, I hear creaking, cracking, and all of a sudden the table started to go. Fortunately, my three older brothers and dad and grandpa were able to catch it while mom and grandma and my sister cleared the table. And then the other good thing was that grandpa was a carpenter, so he was able to quickly fix the table so we could then eat dinner. So the next day on Black Friday, grandma and grandpa went out on their own and bought mom and dad a brand new kitchen set because they didn't want this crunchy old table that was falling apart anymore. Another Thanksgiving that happened a few years later, I was a little older, so I was able to help out. Uh, my mom had gotten a new gas stove and the old electric stove she had was still pretty good. So she was able to put it downstairs in the basement, which was finished. So this brand new stove with fancy electronics at the time, she lit the oven. It was fine. She put the turkey in. Well, somewhere along the line, the oven shut, shut itself off and wouldn't turn back on. And we didn't know there was no gas smell or anything, but the oven was stone cold and she's cooking everything on the stovetop. And she thought, why am I not smelling turkey? And discovered that, oh, the turkey's been sitting in a cold oven for two hours now. Fortunately, she had the oven downstairs she could use, but dinner was a little late that year. So we have these things happen, and then you just laugh it off and make the best of it. I think that year, you know, they opened a couple more bottles of wine, and we just all had a good laugh at it. All right, I'm sipping down my drink pretty good. Um, what are we having for lunch? So I'm going to be making some sausage and peppers today. Get my pan going. With onions and a nice crusty roll and... Yes. Hence sausage and peppers and onions. Oh, okay. So, Getting this going, I'm going to put in just a tiny bit of oil, you know, just to get them started. I have some lovely brats here, just because we love them. I know, should be Italian sausage, but it's close enough. All right, I'm going to get these going in here first because they're going to take the longest. And it's okay that things are not popping and sizzling right away. These are going to heat up pretty quickly on here. See, it's already starting to sizzle. And then with that, I have already cut up some lovely orange and yellow peppers and some onions that we'll deal with a little later. And we just got one in from okay. Facebook. I thought you would get a kick out of this one. Okay. I tried to make Aspen Hill shrimp, but misread your recipe and steamed the shrimp for 45 minutes instead of four to five minutes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful when you're steaming shrimp, right? 45 minutes, that, that's a bit silly. That's crazy, actually. Um, well, I wonder what you did about it. I hope you just laughed it off and made the best of it and kept going. Because really, that's mostly all you can do when you have these nightmares. You figure out how to fix it or move on. Yeah, we had... Mm. We had one of those nightmares just recently with our friends Lance and Ken. I'm not sure if they're watching, but this just happened, and you might be interested in this one. Yeah, uh, this just happened to us on New Year's Eve, this past New Year's Eve. Our friends Lance and Ken were down, and we were supposed to have a nice dinner and then go into see the fireworks in Philadelphia. So I got a leg of lamb to cook. We cook a lot of lamb. I bought it the day before. So it's not like it was sitting around the house for a long time. And when I opened it to start to get it ready to cook, I thought, gee, it smells a little strong. But sometimes lamb has that little gamey smell, and it's perfectly fine. So I didn't think anything of it. I seasoned it. I got it ready. I popped it in the oven. It smelled great while it was cooking. We're all excited. And when I took it out of the oven, I thought, Some, something's wrong. 
But here we were, it's everything else is ready. So I let it have its rest time and I went to cut into it. And when I did, I thought it's, it's something smelling wrong about this. And I took the taste and I said, uh, they were all out in the dining room. I said, dear, honey, could, could you come in for a moment? And I said, quick, 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 taste this. Something wrong with it. Well, here it had spoiled and we didn't realize it. So what do we do? Well, I was a little mortified, but I was lucky that I had some frozen shrimp in the freezer and we just pulled them out, did a quick thaw, gave them a good steam and uh, had shrimp for dinner instead of lamb. We might have opened a couple more bottles of wine too and I'm just turning these. Uh, but fortunately they're our, our dear friends and we just wanted to be together on New Year's Eve. So the fact that the lamb was bad at the end of the day it didn't matter. It was annoying, but I got through it. We had shrimp instead and there you go. All right, so turn these. They're looking lovely. And let them sit for a minute. So what other questions are, are out there? There must be. I got a few. All right. Let's hear them. Oh, I really oversalted some chili that I spent hours cooking. Is there any way to recover? Yes. I have a great tip for you. Let me go in the fridge and get it. Maybe. Here it is. Crystal hot sauce. Something like this adds vinegar and spice to anything that you've over salted. Now it doesn't take away the salt, but it tricks your palate. And because your palate will taste the acid first before the salt. And this is great if you over salt potatoes or rice or soups or chili, whatever it is, just because it tricks your palate. We've done that with soups where yeah. we had just a little too yeah. much. And you would think that if you added it, it would spice it up. And it really doesn't first. It cancels the salt before it spices. Just a couple drops can make a huge difference. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start adding the peppers and onions in. And we're just going to cook this all together. I'm probably going to pop this in the oven. Mix these up a bit. Hi, Mimi. Where are you from? And I am going to hit this with a little salt and pepper. Even though the brats have salt, the vegetables are going to need a little bit just to help them uh, start to release their juices. Not a lot. A little pinch. All right, I got another good one that came in from Facebook. Oh, good. I follow you on Facebook and I see the adventures of Balan Turtle. Oh, I used to see him somewhere in every video. Is there a story behind it? I think it's right behind you. Yes, there is a story behind Valen Turtle. Here he is. Here's our Valen Turtle. So, the story is, I am good friends with my high school music teacher and her wife. And when I was her student back in the day, she had a, a college friend named Pasty. And Pasty would come and visit her, but I'd always seem to miss Pasty. Like, it was kind of like Lois and Clark Kent and Superman, like, oh, you just missed Superman. So for years, I thought Pacey didn't exist. One night we were at dinner at my friend's house and Pacey called and Gene said, oh, well, look, here's Pacey. Take the phone, talk to Pacey. I'm like, hi, Pacey. Silence. You're a figment of Gene's imagination, aren't you? So I didn't think Pacey really existed until I got a Facebook friend request from this person named Patty McGregor. That's Pasty. So we started talking. Now, P Pasty has some health issues, and she's mostly homebound. And one year, she sent us this silly little turtle. And I said, well, you shouldn't spend your money on us, but thank you. And I just love him. So we started doing the Adventures of Alan Turtle on Facebook. So Pasty can see where Alan Turtle goes now. Valen Turtle has met celebrities, drag queens. He's been all up and down the East Coast. He likes his wine. I'm, I'm surprised he's not going after my cocktail because he enjoys a nip once in a while. 
Uh, so that's the story of Val and Turtle. Now, the other fun fact with Casey is a couple years ago, she sent me a private message and said, did Phil ever go to, what high school was it there? Warren Hills? Mount Olive. Mount Olive High School. She said, did Phil ever go to Mount Olive High School? And I asked him, and I said, yeah. So it turns out the two of them went to high school together for a couple of years before Phil moved down to Florida. So here's two people that should not know each other that spent time together. And uh, it was just this fun little, it's a small world moment. Something smells good. What's going on there? This is looking good. I'm going to turn it way, way down. Yeah, it's noisy. I can't hear you, actually. Except I turned it off by mistake. There we go. Way, way down. All right. Actually, I think I'll put a lid on this. Live TV is fun. Mm. Let me do this in the oven. Yeah. Oops. That's not going to fit. But then I'll have nothing to do but stand here and talk and drink. We can look pretty and we can keep drinking. I don't see what the problem is. Well, <laughs> okay. Is that better? Well, get back in the picture and it is better. Yes. Good. So hard, there's... It's hard to do a one-man show from sitting down. Oh, poor dear. So what other questions and comments are there? I'm sure you... All right, we got all... another one from Facebook. Facebook is the, the, the way. Just for you YouTubers, we also monitor Facebook and a lot of private questions come in there. We have a very active Facebook group, uh, uh, yes, sometimes yes. borders on being evil, but it's interesting. You say that like it's a bad thing. Ever forget the timer? Can I forget my argus? Boiled for an hour and survive. Worse, I have survived it before and I realized it. I served it before. Oh, yes. Wow. Half a cocktail and I can't even read. So, yes, I often forget the timer. If there's one thing that I'm guilty of, most often is forgetting the timer usually when we're having company so for t example tonight we have friends coming dinner tonight what we usually do is i'll put something in like say broccoli to roast and then we'll head downstairs to the bar for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and then i forget why the a girls told him right that the alarm is over and it's been going for five minutes right and then they come up and oopsie the broccoli's overdone <laughs> But boiling asparagus for an hour, wow, that's frightening. And you served it. That's great. Okay. That's great. Wow, our friend Joe is getting a little fun again. Okay. You two look so much alike. Yeah, we hear that all the time. Are you twins? No, we're not twins. We just say we're married. Yeah. He's a wee bit older than me, just a couple of years. I robbed the cradle, what can I say? Yeah. Well, not quite, but almost. What's going on down there? All right, let me uh, see what's going on in chat. And we'll show us both here while I Flip these figure out what's going sausages. on in chat here. Wow, YouTube chat's quiet today. Dixie, what are you making for Phil for dinner tonight? Well, let me chicken. guess, chicken. All yeah. right, let's see what else we got. Let me go back to you. Back to me. Yay. It's always back to you. What can well, I say? You know, someone has to be the star and it, it might as well be me. All right. Here's another one from Facebook. Facebook's busy today. Good. Good. What is your best entertaining tip? After I spend all day cooking and cleaning and entertaining, I want to die and burn up my kitchen. From <laughs> okay. Arnie. Okay. That's, no, that's, that's funny. I like that. That is good. So one of my tips that I tell people, uh, Clean as you go. Uh, you know, most people, well, I shouldn't say most people. Let me back that up a minute. Until I lived in this house, I always had a kitchen that was its own separate room, cut off from the rest of the house, because we lived in older homes. When we moved here, now we have this kitchen family room combo. So I had to really get good at cleaning as I go, because otherwise, I have every pot and pan dirty all over the place, and where do people want to come and gather, even while you're cooking? They want to be in the kitchen with you. So... Clean as you go. You made your your dip in the big mixing bowl. You put it in the fridge to chill in a smaller dish. Now you have this big mixing bowl. It's dirty. Go wash it, right? You are done with the mayonnaise or whatever. Put it away. So as you're done with the ingredients, put them away. As you're finished with 
whatever bowl or utensil, just give it a quick wash. I usually keep a sink full of sudsy water, uh, warm sudsy water, so I can just do that and just keep going. So that's my tip. Clean as you go. All right. What you got here? So again, we've had lots of requests of how we're doing this today. So let me show you what Peter's view is and then what my view is. So hi. 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 So here's what he sees. Mm -hmm. And Peter's kind of blind, so we've got a big monitor for him. And you can see we have three cameras. And I can't wait to eat that. And then for those who really are geeking at how we do this, we have an A10 Mini, which is doing all our cameras. And that's all the cameras and views. And so I don't have to turn my head. I have a view of that right above my laptop. So I can just look at the chats and look at the notes and see what's going on there. So I don't have to reach. We use a Stream Deck, which has all my shortcuts. And then our audio is coming from wireless packs that we use for producing our normal shows. So really, every camera that we're using here is actually the same cameras that we produce our videos with. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you the long view this way. And you can see this really is yeah, our kitchen. It's our real kitchen. <sighs> All right. Get some mustard. That's enough show and tell. <laughs> what other questions are there? Are there any others? Okay, let me get back to the machine and I'll tell you. All right, what else have we got? Okay, hey, I got a, another... We have another lamb story that you can do while I see what's going on in chat. You mean that rack of lamb? That's in the it? rack of lamb with the bad thermometer. So here's the thing. We, I always tell you, use your thermometers. This is a great one. But there are also probe thermometers that you have in your oven that come out to a little unit. And I had a very, very expensive one. It was supposed to be the top of the line, the Cadillac or the uh, Lexus or whatever, the you know, Mercedes of thermometers. Here's what I found. Wow. Wow, well, we need to turn Alexa off. And there's off. the A-girl, yeah. Anyway, so I was cooking rack of lamb one night for some guests, and it was their first time coming to dinner, so I really wanted to impress them. And I used a little probe thermometer. I had these beautiful racks of lamb that I made encrusted with pistachios and herbs and mustard, and, and I think we did an episode on that. But anyway, I roasted them. They smelled great. The timer went off on the little probe thermometer saying they were at temperature. I did everything right. I pulled them out. And then I, after they rested, I'm cutting into them and Phil said, they're not done. And I said, no, 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 no. The thermometer said that they were done. It never occurred to me to double check it with this guy because at that point, our guests were at the table. We're all hungry. It's like, no, no, but they were not done at all. They were blue inside still. Fortunately, our friends were very gracious. They ate it, raved about how wonderful and tender and sweet it was, which lamb can be sweet. But I really knew that this was really not cooked. It was blue. It was... Uh. So eventually, we're going to have them over to dinner again, and I will redeem myself. I had thought about cooking a rack of lamb for all of you today so I could redeem myself now, um, but, you know... It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon here. I don't want rack... Latin for lunch. Okay, so Melissa has come through for us in chat okay. about her little nightmare. Tell us. Flames in the microwave due to reheating food on a paper decorative holiday plate. It smelled horrible. Wasn't my mistake, but interesting to watch. And That's he hates microwaves. I do. I do. It, that one behind me, it came with the house. Um, I would, I'm would. i eventually going to have it taken out and have just a range hood. I hate microwaves. I really do. And Dixie says, yes, we're so right. Phil's getting chicken again tonight. <laughs> you cluck your way through life, right? We're going to have to find some more recipes for chicken for Dixie. I've got them. I have entire cookbooks devoted just to chicken. We need some more chicken. We've actually decided that we need more chicken episodes, but we also need more fish episodes. We hadn't realized <clears throat> until we just did salmon, which... By the way, it's got 4,000 views already. I don't know how that happened. Um, they, we don't do much fish, so we're going to try to concentrate on doing a little bit more fish recipes. And you might have already noticed the trend that we are 
Uh, we're not missing our beginning roots, but we are making them a little bit more detailed and a little bit more flavor packed. Um, well, you know, so a lot of you guys have been with us from the beginning. So I want to start introducing some more complicated recipes. And these live streams, we're going to be doing a lot more entertaining tips. In fact, we're going to be actually walking you through how to throw a dinner party, uh, probably in the next live stream. Yep. He's always... Yep. He always yep. wants to do that. He's always wanted to do how to set a table or a buffet. And the problem is, when you're doing it as a video, unless you have all that food, it doesn't kind of work. So we think maybe we'll set this up in our dining room and make a fake buffet out of the dining room table. And yes, I'm still having trouble talking, as most of you can see. The plastic teeth right now are still an issue. And let's That's put okay, up with dear. it about two more months before I get a proper set and learn how to talk. It's all good. Whistling S's and G's are a challenge right now. Right. I'm going to go ahead and get our rolls ready. If I were especially clever today, I would probably toast these. But as you hear, my little bear has some issues with his teeth, so... We'll just have regular rolls. We like mustard. I know that's probably not traditional. Some of you may be clutching your pearls. But you know what? That's what we like. All right. Oh, here's another one from Melissa. Boy, okay. she's our story Making today. Chocolate mousse. I did something wrong with the gelatin. The mousse was beautiful. Taste terrific. Okay. I don't know what percent 26 means. Yeah, it's okay. Just the way it was interpreted. Tastes are terrific, especially when thinly sliced. Yeah, gelatin can be tricky. I know on TV, the chefs are all like, oh, we just soften a few sheets or dump the thing in and let it bloom or whatever. But it can be tricky. But as long as it tastes it well, it sounds like maybe there's a little too much gelatin for that amount of mousse. I don't use gelatin in any of my mousse recipes. I do more with uh, beaten egg whites, like a meringue almost. Hmm. We still have a little issue here where our laptop keeps sneaking in. We'll have to figure that out for the next one. Yeah, it's weird that it keeps happening. So at least we have our camera focus issues done. That's good. We learned a lot from mm -hmm. from last week's live stream, two weeks of live stream. We've made some corrections. I've still got a few more. I can't accidentally hit the fade to black button anymore. I've covered it up with a piece of cardboard. Ooh. I wish you all could be here to smell this. Show that off again. I missed it. There we go. There we go. Peppers can do a little bit more. What do you think, dear? Could, should I add some fresh basil to it? Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on. While you do that, can let me put you back. I'm going to get a shot of you doing that. All right. Oh, yeah, with your little cell phone thing. Did there you little... go. All right. Fresh basil. Are you there? I don't see it there. You will. Go get your basil. Okay. Whatever you say, dear. Yes, dear. Okay. So we really do grow our own vegetables. Vegetables. Our own... Herbs. Herbs. So right now we got parsley going. The dill didn't do very well. No, they did the rosemary. Neither but did our rosemary. It's early for them. But it's a bit early. But we've got tons of basil. Let's see if I can get a better shot here. And down there, there's some parsley and a few other things. So when we say use fresh, you can do it. You don't need a garden. This is just sitting in a window pot. These are, you know, $3 basils from the grocery store that we just transplanted, and they're doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. That should be enough. You give them a little quick little rinse, even though they're just in here. Still, quick little rinse and dry. Any other questions or stories? Oh, let me look. Miley says it looks delicious. Oh, thank you. Where are you from, Miley? Okay, I got another one. <laughs> this is a fun story because it actually involves me. Oh. About a certain townhouse and painting and flight oh. instructor and oh, dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's not really a kitchen nightmare. Sure it is. Other for than, some people. Well, for some people, yeah. Let me, um, hold on. 
We want to give these peppers and things a good stir around. By the way, so Miley is a neighbor. Look where she's from, dear. Oh, Voorhees! Yay! So Voorhees is about six miles. We're in Sewell, which is really Deptford Township. Yeah, we're really close to the Deptford Mall. Yeah, we're like three minutes away from the Deptford Mall, Deptford Mall, and we're about fifteen minutes away from downtown Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Hour and a half from New York, hour and a half from Washington D.C. So we are kind of in the thick of all of it. So, not really a kitchen nightmare for me anyway, but maybe some of you it would have been. Um, many years ago, Phil used to be a flight instructor on the side at a little local airport. And it's just a fun hobby that he did. So one weekend, we were, when we were living in our townhouse, we decided to paint the living room. So we painted the living room, and in the middle of it, he got a call from one of his students who had just passed the final tests and final things with it, uh, the final instructor for his license, and he got his pilot's license. It was 3 in the afternoon. Okay. This was like 20 years ago. I don't remember all the details. Anyway, Phil's on the phone congratulating him. Our house is a wreck. And he's like, oh, sure, we'd love to celebrate. Come over to dinner tonight. Yeah, we'll have blah, 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 blah. And he gave them the whole menu and everything. Now, I'm sitting there going, wait, what? Uh... Okay, and then I'm looking at the bank account. I was like, okay, crap, how are we going to figure this out? But we did. So I went out, I figured out dinner. He cleaned up the living room. And uh, it might still smell like paint a little bit, but we pulled it off, and they came over to dinner, and we had a great time. Uh, if I think if I remember right, we ate out on the patio because it was warm and it was still a little paint fumes. But uh, that's the type of stuff my husband does to me sometimes. Well, You're, he always thinks of Bewitched, yeah. where Darren just invites uh, clients over for dinner parties. So, okay, I was channeling him. I was just going to say that, if you remember Bewitched. You haven't done that to me in a long time, though. Well, you know, I'm not in corporate mode anymore. I don't really entertain, but mm -hmm. it's all good. We have all this we have a channel for entertaining and video. And well, yeah. If I don't like it, I can edit it out. All right, so I'm run my knife through that roughly. There we go. Where's your bench scraper? In the drawer behind me. I'm not going to do that. So here's a great kitchen safety tip. And you see chefs doing it all the time. Please don't ever take your chef's knife and do this to pick something up. So in my brief tenure at cooking school, I was watching a demonstration one day, and the chef was chopping onions and he's going really fast and, I said, and he's talking to us and someone said don't you ever cut yourself and he said no I've been doing a chef blah 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 for 35 years and he went to scoop up the onions and it slipped and went right into his hand and his assistant who was standing next to him the color just drained out of her face and he kind of went oh and she grabbed a towel took him off out of the room we're sitting there like what's going on and another couple chefs came out and then we got a lecture on knife safety so please don't ever ever do that i know we see chefs on tv and i know some of my chef friends out there probably do it too it's efficient way but please don't do that any other questions dear? if you have to do it then at least turn the knife over and use the flat well, dull side i like using a bench scraper this is not just for baking because it's nice and dull and you can get all that up and you're not going to cut your hand all right smells good does smell good how are we doing on time we still have about 15 more minutes left okay. let's put this in we'll just let that all right Okay, oh, st oh, hey, Steph. Steph and Mark are in. Hi, Steph and Mark. Slicing yams lengthwise with a dull knife. Ended up taking part of my thumb off. Emergency room asked six times if I... Oh, my goodness. Yes. So, what did we learn from that? Keep your knives sharp. If you're going to cut yourself, and we all do it, even the professionals, and all my chef friends... Like Andy and Erica will attest that, yes, 
chefs cut themselves too and they burn themselves and they burn stuff on the stove. But when your knives are sharp, if you do cut yourself, you'll get a clean cut. When the knives are dull, it's going to tear, it'll go wonky, and then you end up with stitches and, like Steph said, taking part of her thumb off. Yeah, so sharp knives. Always keep them sharp. Right, I'm going to turn this off and just let the residual heat in this cast iron just kind of do its job and finish this all off. I am going to check where did I put the little thermometer. Yeah, live TV. All right, so there's only a few of us in chat today. It's a little Aww. low live stream, but we're going to keep doing this until we get it right and have a little fun. If any of you have some ideas, we are still in planning mode. We already have next week's Oof. episode ready, and we already have Cocktail Friday's episode. Yes. So if you can think of a good basic skill or Dixie, a chicken recipe, give us some ideas in chat, and we'll see if we can work them in in the next week or so. Or if there's a topic you'd like us to, to discuss and talk about in these live streams. One of the things, like I said, we're going to be talking more about entertaining tips, tricks, things like that. But maybe there's something else you would like to hear about. Ah, uh, that's it. What? Learn from other people's mistakes so we can make new ones. Exactly. Exactly. And then talk about you and laugh. Right. So we are having friends over to dinner tonight. One friend that we haven't seen in a few years. Uh, so okay, this is good. What? I still went out. The thumb grew back, and my partner goes, "All yes, you did. Yes, absolutely." <laughs> and Sorry, while, Mark. While Mark is cutting, you're doing the shaky, shaky of the Cosmo, right? We're saying, do I hear Cosmo being shaking? Could I? Five more weeks when our campground opens, the Cosmos will be shaking again. And we've got a couple other cocktails this year for you, Steph, yep. too. And we think we're going to try to do one of these live streams from, from our camp. seasonal site. It could yeah. be a nightmare because that's a working campground with lots of golf carts and people walking mm. by and yelling and screaming. But we're going to think we're going to give it a shot. All right. These are looking done. They're certainly done. I'm going to put some peppers and onions out on our little roll. I got lots I know. and lots of peppers. If you could have your way, you would have the slathered in cheese too, but not che everything needs cheese, dear. Everything needs cheese. Cheese is a good thing. Yes, dear. Don't yes, dear me. <laughs> so I wonder what kitchen nightmare I will have tonight. Will I forget the timer? Will I ov overcook the roast beef? Will I burn the broccoli, as I often do? So, you know, we're not gluttons for punishment enough. This live stream will be over in probably about 15 more minutes. We're going to break all this equipment down, and then we have three people coming over for a dinner party at 5, which yeah. means cleaning the house and doing all this and cooking. Why do we do this to ourselves? We're a bit masochist. And yes, right? Melissa, cheese is good. So, yes, cheese is good. I even made a white chocolate cheesecake for dessert tonight. Never mind the crack in it. It's going to have sauce on it. No one will see it. But, yeah, cheese is good. But still, there's a practical limit. My bear likes cheese on everything. All right. Sandwiches are all done. We're just going to let them rest because you always let things rest. Now, that's one plate. Two plates. There are two plates, dear, and there are two of us. Oh, Okay. You and your I teeth. guess I'm coming to get... My teeth made my brain stop working. Yeah. I know what it is. The cocktail is empty. I don't have enough to drink. Well, I can't help you there. Wait, All right. Wait. Are we tasting this on Who's camera? Who's better? Right? I don't know. doesn't matter. Well, you can taste. You're the talent. Oh. I'm going to go be alone with mine over here. Thanks, dear. Hmm. That's quite nice. And let's make fun with the man with no teeth and let's see if he can chew on it. Yeah. That's quite fun. Spicy mustard, nice brat, full of flavor, fresh vegetables, a little pop from the herbs at the end. So you always want to add fresh herbs at the end of cooking. It's a good thing I'm wearing an apron because I just lost half of it down the front of me. Oh, well. 
This was your idea to have this today. Yes, it was my idea. Yes. Yeah, he says, can I, we have sausage and peppers for lunch? Oh, ideas for entertaining Easter. Uh, sure, lots of them. So it would depend on how many people you're having over for dinner. Whether you want to do a turkey or a ham or leg of lamb. But think about how maybe doing a buffet, if you're going to have a lot of people. Now, there's a science of setting up buffets. You start with salads and breads and things at one end, and you direct the flow of traffic to end with the protein, like the turkey or the ham or whatever, and all the side dishes in between. That way, when they get to the end, they're going to have just a normal portion instead of loading up on ham or lamb. But I have lots of other ideas. Melissa, so sure, send us some emails and, and I'll answer them and send you some recipes. Speaking of emails, if you've got an idea or you want us to do an episode or you've got a comment about something we can use, we'll ask your permission in a live stream question, send it to info at letscelebrate.tv and we will do that. Or you can jump to our website Let's celebrate TV and just fill out the form and do all sorts of cool things there. Yeah. I don't know what we're doing for Easter yet. I know I'm coordinating the uh, covered dish lunch at church, but other than that, I don't well, so know. So that means I'm going to be there too, huh? Like you have a choice. Okay. But I don't know if we're having company yet or not, or even a menu idea, so. Well, we've already had all the kids and grandkids and exes and everybody else over for thanksgiving so i kind of think we're done with family mode but well there's our biological family and our logical family so maybe we'll have some friends over and i don't really care for ham so we'll probably do a leg of lamb i'll try and redeem myself i'll just get it from a different store than the one at new year's Oof. wow look at my notes what? we actually did all of our nightmares did we hmm. Well, Steph's nightmare really kind of scares me, too. And I've done that. I, I've cut myself when we're having dinner parties. And, and, yeah, I have not yet, knock on wood, cut myself while doing LCTV. It's going to happen. It will. Just law of averages. But um, hopefully not on live stream. That's yeah, why I don't cut If it's on film, I can edit it and get rid of it. Right. But... Right. Any more comments, questions? No. No? No, chat's kind of light today. That's okay. That's Let me jump right. over to Facebook, see what's going on over there. No. No, it's a quiet day. All right. So, shall we tell them what we got coming up for our next cocktail episode? Yes. On Cocktail yes. Friday? Yes. Because I may need to go make one now because I'm wanting it. So, we're making, it's called a grapefruit martini. and Grapefruit and rose yes, martini. Yes, grapefruit and rose and it's just, it's going to blow your mind. It's fancy schmancy, a little sophisticated, but wow, it will just take you to a place you haven't been to before. And then how about Tuesday's full recipe? Because we just said we weren't, haven't done much with seafood. Right. So we're going to do a scallop and mushroom gratin. It's uh, my own recipe inspired by, if you know what Coquille Saint-Jacques is, which is a French uh, little gratin type appetizer mode uh this is a slightly different and uh, i'm serving as a, a main course this time so it's something very easy fun a little decadent a little indulgent you know there's butter and heavy cream brunch looks sumptuous thanks yeah so now we need some ideas because if we're doing these live streams with the topic we also have to cook lunch so what do you think we should cook for lunch or brunch Maybe we should have guest star Melissa to say. Oh, yeah. Well, Melissa's in Michigan. Oh. So unless she's doing a judging a show in Central... Well, Melissa is very an expert and a judge and a trainer in equestrian sports. Aha. Uh -huh. And Central New Jersey has a number of uh, horse training farms, mostly for racetracks, but there are training um, farms and a number of farms... Do they Still do the Devon Horse Show and all of that? I don't know. Melissa would probably know about that. And Melissa's working on her YouTube channel. She's a member of our YouTube group that meets on Wednesdays. And we're always picking her brains. And and she's getting ready to, to make some great videos. So I can't wait to see them sometime in the future. 
Good, 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 good. So yeah, so now I have to figure out what we're going to cook for the next live stream. No pressure. I've got two weeks. All like right. yesterday, we were thinking, what am I going to cook? And I had an idea, and then he had an idea, and then we settled on this. And now I need to eat some more. Yes. <laughs> uh, so those are some kitchen nightmares we talked about today. I know you all had them. The key thing is, really, especially when you're entertaining, things happen. It does. You just got to keep moving, figure it out, switch gears, and then laugh about it later. It really is okay. Because when you're entertaining, you know, the people that you want to, are there that you're entertaining, they want to be with you. You want to be with them. It's not all about that the meal has to be perfect every single time. It's about sharing conversations and getting to know one another even better and just being together. And that's why we started this channel. Yep. Because what ended up happening is people would not invite us over. And they would say, well, we can't do it like you. We can't entertain like you. We're not asking you to. We do it because we can. Invite us for pizza and beer. It's about who you're being with, not what you're cooking Mm -hmm. and not what you're rating. And even when you have a kitchen nightmare, unless it's your relatives, people aren't going to judge you. Stuff happens. We have had some issues. We did have one little, one more little story. Uh, We had some dinner guests show up from out of town the weekend before. We were expecting them on a certain weekend, and Friday night, they come walking in. Hi, we're here. Why are you guys here? What are you doing? (laughs) Next week. Next week, boys. So they got their dates mixed up and and drove like six hours. And uh, so... (laughs) We just changed our plans, and they were here for that weekend instead. But that was one of those, oh, dear, you you get them settled. I'm going to run out to the Acme and get some food because, yeah. But you figure it out. All right. We're coming on the hour. All righty. And since chat's kind of slow and we don't have anything. Oh, Michelle, Melissa's dad, Devin, is alive and well. All right. Ah, so okay. the percent 26 is an and percent. Gotcha. We will work on that. Devin is alive and well. All right. Yeah, I drive, up, I, know about I drive up to Central Jersey because I have some field offices in North Jersey, New York, and I must go through 12 or 13 stable and training centers all there. Hmm. Also in South Jersey towards the farmlands, and people associate... People associate um, New Jersey with New York, but there's actually a reason they call this the Garden State, because from the central on down, it's all farmland. We call it Kansas at the east. And down in Salem, there's also quite a few um, horse training centers and horse farms and okay. and um, um, uh, stabling locations. Off topic, for the record, this is water. I drink a lot of water, so this is not cocktails. Just plain old water. I don't know. It, it it could be cocktails. Are you kidding? But not today. All right. Thank you all for watching. Yes. We will see you in two more weeks. We'll hang around the chat for a few more minutes just in case you got any questions. If not, from Peter Lee. That's me. And Phil Gordimer. We'll see you in chat, and we'll see you in two weeks. Remember, tune in on Tuesdays and Fridays for our regular episodes and our cocktails and basic skills. Cheers.